Hello everyone, welcome to another time-lapse sketching tutorial. Today I'm going to sketch this building with the help of this reference photograph which you can download from the video description below if you want to challenge yourself. Um, okay, so um, this video is actually the condensed version of the full-length tutorial I have made for my patrons. So if you want to watch the full tutorial at normal speed, you can support me on Patreon. The tools I'll be using today are this Duke Confucius fountain pen with a Fude nib, which is a bent nib. I will be dipping this pen into this Speedball Super Black ink. This is India ink, heavily pigmented and waterproof when dry. So if you want to use dip pens with this ink, make sure you clean your pen after uh, each drawing session. It's very important, otherwise your pen is going to clog. And after drawing, I will be painting with these watercolors. These are from Schminker. This is PY151 Erolin Vermilion Light PR188 Cobalt Blue Deep PB74 and Indigo PB15 colon 1 and PB66. I will also be using the white gel pen for adding details and white gouache um, to correct some mistakes if there are any. I started this sketch by using the light blue colored pencil to draw the outline for the main building because um, this building has a lot of details and the perspective is quite challenging. This is actually a two-point perspective scene. The two vanishing points are out of the outside of the photograph, one on the left and one on the right. So by using the light blue pencil, I I mean, it's easier for me to get the perspective and composition right. So with this sketch, I started with um, the left and then draw the big shapes for the buildings. Notice that I drew this um, sort of a rectangular shape first for the front of the building and then I drew the top of the building. Um, there are three semicircles at the top, so I drew them in this way in a way that can help me divide the buildings into sort of an equal proportion because if you take a look there are actually um, those uh, pillars or columns running down and those pillars would run down from the top of the building through the first floor and to the ground so when you're drawing it's good to convey the idea that this is actually uh, one solid piece of pillar that goes down now that I have used the pillars to subdivide the main buildings, later on I later on it's going to be much easier to draw the windows, easier to place the windows within those uh, smaller rectangles. And uh, because this scene, this building has foreshortening due to the perspective, the windows on the right side and the pillars there. The spacing between the windows and the pillars, they are going to be smaller and smaller as they go to the background, away from the foreground. For the trees, um, if you squint and take a look at the trees, you can see that it's quite difficult to uh, identify the individual trees. So I'm just basically drawing the outline for this bunch of trees and plants. And later on painting uh, it with watercolor will be much easier if i use too much black ink um, i mean for vegetation sometimes it's good not to use too much black inks because sometimes it's very difficult to see the ages i use black ink only when i want to identify a certain age so drawing windows here are um, quite simple just basically place them within the tall vertical rectangle as for the windows themselves with the windows with the vents uh, make sure that they are in correct perspective so some of the windows are open some are closed this adds some uh, variation so now i'm just checking my work and trying to add any details if there are any so the watercolors that i'm using today are schminker py151 that is aerolin if you're using daniel smith that's um, azo yellow 
I'm using PR188, Vermilion Light, which is a warm red. And for the blues, it's PB74, uh, Cobalt Blue Deep, which is a color that doesn't have a high tinting strength. So in order to achieve intensity, you will need to use a lot of PB74. And that paint, Cobalt Blue Deep, it's quite expensive. So to paint the dark shadows and the blacks that are at the bottom of the buildings, I need to introduce a new color, in which case I added indigo as well, which is a really dark blue. Otherwise, it would be impossible to get a black with cobalt blue dip. So for the coloring section, it's actually pretty straightforward. I started by painting the yellows and the blues for the trees, the plants, and then paint the main building with yellow and red. As much as possible, I tried to mix the colors on paper so that the colors can blend on their own rather than mix them completely on your palette and apply them on the paper in which case the colors will be quite flat so if you have the colors mixed on the paper it's quite quite nice such as um such as the clouds that i've just painted so i tried to let them mix on the paper as well for the clouds it's just a mix of um, yellow red and blue in different proportions by using a limited color palette um, you don't have to think too much about mixing colors. So for example, if you are mixing an orange, it's yellow plus red. If you want to make the orange um, a bit less saturated, just add blue. If you want to mix gray and somehow your gray doesn't look right, it just means that the proportion of the colors that you have used is not right. So you have to um, look for the right proportion of colors to use for the shadows on the building it's mixed with a lot of cobalt blue and even though i use a lot of cobalt blue deep you can see that uh, the shadows uh, they are not that dark because cobalt blue deep it's a low it's a color with low tinting strength but i like this color PB74 because of the beautiful granulation and it's very transparent so you have this um, shadow this granulating shadow that overlays onto the colors behind to create a very nice um, shadow effect that I really like so this is it this is the completed sketch let's zoom in and take a closer look So this was drawn very um, loosely. The main idea here really is to get the big shapes right. The little details are not as important. They do uh, make, I mean little details do make the sketch look more interesting. But the big shapes are what makes the building recognizable. Oh, this part here is supposed to be black. This part here. So see the windows here? Um, this part here where I left it white, it should be like this, not like this. Although I think it looks alright. But here it doesn't look as good. 